Imagine that you are deploying your containerized app inside your Kubernetes cluster and you are using Google Cloud instances as Kubernetes master and Kubernetes worker nodes. And your requirement is to have a persistent mount point inside your pod to store your application data. We have seen few volume types such as empty dir host path volume types previously. But they are not suitable for this kind of things. So they are out of this picture. So what is your next available option? Hello and welcome to GCE Persistent Disk Volume Type. So in next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is GCE Persistent Disk and how to make use of GCE Persistent Disk inside your pod to store application data. But before you watch this video, it is required to have a basic understanding of what are volumes, volume types such as empty dir and host path. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you will be learning as part of this video. This presentation is divided into two parts. In part one, we will discuss what is GCE persistent disk and why it is used. After that, we will review the GCE persistence review demo we are able to perform on live Kubernetes cluster. This will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live. So in this review demo, I'll show you what goes inside the pod with a GC persistent disk volume type in a manifest file. Then we'll create and display that. After that, we'll test the use case of GC persistent disk deployment by making sure it is working as it should be. And finally, we'll clean up what we have created in this review demo. And now let's get started with discussing what is GCE Persistent Disk and its main purpose. So what is GCE Persistent Disk? GCE Persistent Disk is a persistent disk on Google Compute Engine. So GCE Persistent Disk volume type mounts a persistent disk into your pod. Unlike empty dir, the contents inside the GCE Persistent Disk are preserved even after the pod is removed or dies for any unknown reason. Like any other cloud storage disks, features of GC persistent disk is that they can be mounted as read only by multiple pods simultaneously. This means that you can pre-populate a GC persistent disk with your dataset and then serve it in parallel to as many pods as you need. However, GC persistent disk can only be mounted by a single pod in a read-write mode, not the simultaneous writers are allowed. And there are some restrictions on how you can use GC persistent disk. These restrictions are similar to other cloud supported disks such as AWS Elastic Block Store and Azure Disk. First, you must create a GC persistent disk before you can use it in pod spec. Second, Kubernetes worker node on which pods are running must be Google Cloud instances. And finally, those VMs needs to be in the same GCE project and zone as a persistent disk. So that's about the GCE persistent disks. At a very high level, AWS Elastic Block Store and Azure Disk are similar to this and has the same restrictions. So far, we have discussed about what are storage volumes why we need it, and what are the different types of storage volumes. So that's about the high level overview of Kubernetes storage volumes. And now let's create the GCE persistent disk and mount inside the pod to store some data. So that's about the high level overview of Kubernetes storage volumes. And now let's create the GCE persistent disk and mount inside the pod to store some data. And now let's move on to the next part. In next few slides, We'll review the demo we are able to perform on live Kubernetes cluster. First, we'll see what goes inside the pod manifest file with GC persistent disk volume type. Then, we'll deploy the sample app using GC persistent disk volume type. After that, we'll display and validate GC persistent disk to make sure it is created as per our expectations. Then, we'll test the use case to validate. And finally, We'll clean up the things we ought we have created in this demo. And now let's start with writing the manifest file. 
So to use GCE Persistent Disk inside our pod config, first we need to create the Persistent Disk on Google Cloud Platform. There are two ways to create this disk. One using Google Cloud website, and other using gcloud command line tool. And we'll use gcloud command line tool to create this disk. This gcloud command will create one disk of size 10 gig inside US Central 1A zone. Disk name is my data disk. We can run this from Cloud Shell, which is available after you log into the GCE. After you execute this command, you should see my data disk is created within just few seconds. You can find this disk on Google Cloud Platform as well. And there is one thing to observe here, and that is the disk which we just created is a raw disk. And this needs to be formatted with your desired format type, either ext4, xfs, or other supported formats. We'll mention this format type information in the pod config. Now the disk is ready and it's time to create the pod manifest file. Here is a pod config file. One thing that is missing here is volumes. So coming to the volume sections, it consists of name of the volume, which is test volume in this example. Then type of the volume we are creating is GC persistent disk. Then persistent disk name on Google Cloud Platform is my data disk. And finally, we'll format this disk with ext4 file system. And now we'll mount this GC persistent disk volume inside the container at the mount path called test PD location. That's it. Now we'll create this pod object by running kubectl create command, which we'll see in the next slide. We create the pod object using kubectl create command followed by pod manifest file name. So once the pod is created, then you can check the status of pod by running kubectl get pod with wide option to find on which node this pod is running on. So as you see, the pod is scheduled on node ending with fqr0 and running successfully. If you're wondering what this weird node name is, and this is one of the node in GKE cluster. So GKE is a Kubernetes service, which is running on top of Google Cloud Platform. Now, if you go and check the status of disk on Google Cloud Platform, you will notice the my data disk, which is part of this node is marked as in use by the node where this pod is scheduled, which is node ending with FQR0. So in next slide, We'll look at the complete details of the pod using kubectl describe command. So we can display the complete details of pod by running kubectl describe pod command followed by pod name. One important thing to notice here from this output is the volume information. You can see the type of volume is GC persistent disk and disk name is my data disk and the file system type is ext4. From this, it is confirmed that we have successfully created the persistent disk and mounted inside the pod. Next, let's test the use case of GC persistent disk and we'll see that in next slide. Here, we'll go through the steps involved in testing the use case of GC persistent disk. The purpose of GC persistent disk is to have data persistent on the disk irrespective of failure of nodes, unexpected reboots, shutdown, and any interruptions to our pod or node. So overall, we expect to have our data saved on the disk safely across all these instances. So to test this use case, we'll first create a sample file with some content inside that mount point. Then we'll delete the pod. Now, even if the pod is deleted, we expect to have our above data to be safely saved on my data disk on Google Cloud. Next, we'll recreate the pod with same configuration. And finally, we'll verify the data which we created in step one is still available on the disk or not. So let's start with step one. So in step one, we'll go into the pod and create the sample test file with some contents in it. You can go inside the pod by running kubectl exact command followed by pod name. Here, we need to pass the options such as interactive terminal and the shell type we need. So after you are inside the pod, 
you can check the mount point test pd by doing the df so output confirms that mount point test pd exists then we need to create the sample test file called test1 with some content in it so after that is done and we'll exit from the pod now in step 2 we'll delete the pod we can do that by using kubectl delete command followed by f option and the file name so based on the output it confirms that pod has been deleted also you can see the my data disk is not in use by any node so that's about the step 2 now coming to the step 3 we will recreate the pod with same configuration and same disk and we'll see that in next slide so to create the same pod object we will use the kubectl create command followed by same pod object manifest file name once that is done you can verify the status of this pod by using kubectl get command output confirms that pod is scheduled on node ending with 2t9h and running successfully also you can see my data disk is marked in use by node where the pod is scheduled so since we are using the same disk we are expect to have our data still there from previous testing and let's check that in next slide first let's make sure the volume is mounted on test pd location inside our pod we can do that by running kubectl exec command with a df command from the output it is mounted next let's do the ls on that mount to make sure our test1 file which we created from our initial test is still there we can do that by using same kubectl exec with ls command as you can see from the output our test1.html file is still there and finally let's cat that file by running kubectl exec command with cat command yes contents are still the same so based on our above testing it did worked as it should be so far we have discussed about what is gce persistent disk how to create gce persistent disk and how to use it in a pod manifest file and finally test the use case of it now before you move on to the next video let's review the things we discussed so far in this video coming to the summary in the first section we discussed about what is gce persistent disk and why it is used GC persistent disk is a Google compute engine persistent disk. Data inside the persistent disk is preserved even after the pod is removed from the node or dies for any unknown reason. And in the part 2, we review the GC persistent disk we are about to perform on live Kubernetes cluster. So in that review demo, what goes inside the pod with a GC persistent disk manifest file? Then we created and display the gce persistent disk which we just created after that we tested the use case of gce persistent disk deployment by making sure it is working as it should be and finally we cleaned up what we have created and now we are moving on to the next video and which is gce persistent live demo in that video we'll perform the exact steps that we just discussed in the review demo section on live kubernetes cluster and finally thank you so much for watching this and hope to see you in the next video